Hey there, basketball fanatics. You know, many people out there claim to have had near-death experiences. But did you know that even some of our beloved NBA players have faced their own life-threatening moments? Today, we're diving into the stories of these incredible ballers who nearly lost their lives in some truly tragic incidents. Buckle up, folks, because we're about to embark on an adrenaline-pumping journey. First up on our list is none other than Carmelo Anthony. Picture this, Dwayne Wade, the man himself, was doing an Instagram Live with Carmelo when Wade's better half, the lovely Gabrielle Union, encouraged Melo to share his near-death story. Oh, I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you the story right now. Then we oh. but here's what went down. Carmelo was chilling in the Bahamas with D. Wade and LeBron James. Yeah, you heard that right, LeBron was in on this too. Now, listen closely, because things have taken a dangerous turn. Melo decides to take a plunge and jumps off the boat, aiming to swim his way toward a breathtaking grotto. But little did he know, trouble was lurking in the depths. As he swam towards the cave, he suddenly realized that the current was dragging him farther away from safety. Yikes! Believe it or not, it got so intense that Dwayne Wade, watching from the boat, couldn't even spot Carmelo anymore. Can you imagine the panic? But here comes the hero of our story, LeBron James. Yep, King James himself saw the dire situation and leaped into action. He dove into the water and swam toward Carmelo like a real-life superhero. Now, brace yourselves for this jaw-dropping moment. According to Carmelo, LeBron was literally playing Aquaman out there. He was swimming with one arm while using the other to carry our man Melo back to safety. Talk about clutch teamwork. LeBron James, ladies and gentlemen, not and only saved the day, but also know, saved Carmelo's like life. Saved life. Doesn't get more dramatic than that, folks. But hold your basketballs, folks, because this story takes an unexpected turn. Picture this, LeBron, our story's hero, had concerns about the Cleveland Cavaliers team airplane. And boy, did he complain about it. He was like, hey, team management, this plane is ancient, but they didn't take him seriously, typical. Fast forward a few years and LeBron's still worried about this rusty flying machine. So he finally decides to bring it up with the Cavaliers owner, Dan Gilbert. But guess what? Dan brushed off LeBron's concerns like they were lint on his fancy suit. Not cool, Dan, not cool. Now here's where things get interesting. Brace yourselves because it's story time with LeBron himself. In 2003, the Cavs had to take a flight, and boy, was it a doozy. LeBron recalled, I always complained about our team plane. It was old, run down, and painted in those outdated Cavs colors, Carolina blue and orange. They boarded the plane in Cleveland and headed for Detroit to pick up the team's ownership, and that's when the chaos began. Everyone on that flight, and I mean everyone, thought their lives were about to hit a slam dunk straight into the afterlife. LeBron paints the picture vividly. The owner's wife, who happened to be pregnant at the time, wasn't feeling too good. She ended up tossing her cookies multiple times. Gross, right? But wait, there's more. The poor stewardess ended up with a broken ankle. Ouch! Maybe she was trying to do some in-flight acrobatics to distract everyone from the impending doom. To add more spice to this already turbulent mix, smoke started billowing out of the kitchen. Yep, yeah, you heard it right, smoke on a plane. The lights were flickering on and off, creating an eerie atmosphere that would excite any horror movie director. LeBron, in all his wisdom, was sitting there thinking, I told you so, folks, but no one wanted to listen to him before. Well, guess what? This was the moment LeBron truly believed it was game over. He thought, this is it, we're done for. Thankfully, nothing catastrophic happened that day. LeBron survived to tell the tale and make even more legendary moves on the court. Phew! But guess what happened the following year? Yeah, you got it right, my hoop-loving pals. The team finally got themselves a shiny new plane. Hallelujah! So, besides a few broken ankles and some unfortunate vomiting incidents, LeBron and his fellow passengers lived to dribble another day. Talk about a close call. So, the next time you board a plane, folks, just be thankful you're not an old, smoke-filled aircraft with flickering lights. And remember, even the mighty LeBron James can't escape the drama of air travel. Moving on, we have the legendary Damian Lillard, known for his clutch performances on the court. But before he was living the high life, our man Damian had to navigate the mean streets of Oakland, California. Now, Oakland is no walk in the park, folks, with its sky-high crime rate. But young Lillard didn't let that hold him back. Picture this, a young Damian, fresh out of basketball practice, innocently waiting at a bus stop. Suddenly, three shady characters surround him, demanding he hand over all his possessions. Well, 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 these guys clearly didn't know who they were messing with. 
with the confidence only a future NBA superstar could possess, Damian looks them dead in the eye and simply says, no. Talk about nerve. Of course, these three amateurs wouldn't let our boy off the hook that easily. They decided to take matters into their own hands and attack Lillard. But hold up, folks. Against all odds, our hero holds his own and puts up a fight. I mean, seriously, three guys against one Damien? It's like trying to guard him on the court. It's a lost cause. But here's where things take a terrifying twist. As if fighting off three attackers wasn't enough, one of them decides to up the ante and pulls out a gun. Yep, you heard it right, a gun. Suddenly, Damien realizes it's time to retreat, and I can't say I blame him. Your survival instincts kick in when someone points a gun at your head. Smart move, Lillard. Now, what's even more mind-boggling is that Damien turned this dramatic experience into art. Yes, my friends, he raps about it in his song Roll Call. Talk about turning adversity into gold. In the lyrics, Dame confesses that his heart was pounding and he was praying to the high heavens. Well, I don't blame you, buddy. That's a seriously chilling experience. Thankfully, Damien managed to escape without any harm. But let's take a deep breath because we're about to enter even darker territory. So buckle up. Next on our list is none other than the truth teller himself, Paul Pierce. We all know him for his mesmerizing skills on the court. But did you know he also faced a brush with death? That's right, folks. Get ready for some serious goosebumps. Now, Paul wasn't always surrounded by the glitz and glamour of the NBA. Back in the day, he had his fair share of struggles. One fateful day, Pierce found himself in a truly horrifying situation. Brace yourselves, my friends. Our man was stabbed not once, not twice, but 11 times. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. I mean, seriously, who stabs Paul Pierce? The man is a basketball legend, not a pincushion. Talk about a terrifying encounter. I can't even imagine the pain and fear he must have felt in those moments. But hey, Pierce is made of tough stuff. He didn't let those stab wounds bring him down. Instead, he rose from the ashes like a phoenix, returning more robust than ever. It's a testament to his unwavering determination and the sheer willpower that drives these NBA heroes. All right, time to switch lanes. We also have an unbelievable story about the legendary Paul Pierce. In 2000, Paul Pierce found himself at a nightclub in Boston, having a grand old time chatting up a few ladies. Oh, the good life. But wait, here comes the plot twist. Out of nowhere, a random dude, probably jealous of Pierce's smooth moves, tells him to stay away from a particular woman. I mean, who does that? Ignoring the warning, Pierce locks eyes with the woman, and she gives him a look that screams, stay away from that guy, he's bad news. Well, guess what? Pierce didn't back down. He continued talking to her, not realizing he was about to step into a full-on brawl. Before he knew it, Pierce was in the middle of a brawl with not one, not two, but three dudes. Can you imagine? It's like a real-life basketball version of three-on-one. And in the blink of an eye, Pierce's jacket becomes a Jackson Pollock painting with blood splattered everywhere. The man endured three stomach stabs and five back stabs, and as if that wasn't enough, one of these guys smashed a bottle on his face, leaving him with a scar over his eye. Ouch! Now I know what you're thinking. Did Pierce survive this insane encounter? Well, thankfully he did, but not without some severe battle scars. Blood dripping down his face, struggling to keep his eyes open and gasping for breath, Pierce realized he was lucky to be alive. He was absolutely terrified, folks. Picture him being rushed to the hospital, banging on the door, anxiously asking if he would make it. Talk about a nail-biting moment. Pierce spent a grueling two days in the hospital before finally going home. But guess what? His misfortune wasn't over yet. While recovering at home, he turns on the TV and sees a news report about a teenager stabbed twice and tragically passed away. Can you imagine the impact that had on Pierce? It made him value and appreciate life on a whole other level. That night became a turning point for him. So how did Pierce cope with this traumatic event? Well, for the next two years, he carried a gun everywhere. Yeah, you heard that right. Paul Pierce, the NBA superstar, turned into the NBA's own John Wick. And let's not forget the lingering effects of PTSD. Large crowds became his worst nightmare. Poor guy couldn't even enjoy a basketball game without feeling on edge. Sleep? Yeah, that became a distant memory. Nights were spent waking up in cold sweats, drowning in anxiety. It was a rough time, my friends. To ensure his safety, Pierce even hired round-the-clock police surveillance for himself and his house. I mean, talk about taking precautions to the next level. But here's where things take an exciting turn. Instead of letting fear consume Pierce, he channeled all of his energy into basketball. The gym became his sanctuary, his escape from the turmoil of everyday life. He used the sport to free his mind, to find solace in the game he loved. Talk about dedication. 
And guess what, folks? It gets even crazier. Despite enduring such a life-threatening attack just one month before the start of the NBA training camp, Pierce defied all odds and played all 82 games that season. Can you believe it? Talk about resilience. It's no wonder he earned the nickname The Truth. Pierce's determination and strength were truly unmatched. And let's pass the ball to our next jaw-dropping story that'll have you on the edge of your seat. Hold on to your basketballs, because this one's a doozy. So we're talking about the Ball Brothers, folks. You know, the dynamic duo of the NBA, LaMelo and Lonzo. But let's rewind the clock and take a trip back to their childhood days when things weren't all slam dunks and three-pointers. Picture this, a young LaMelo just four years old and an eight-year-old Lonzo living the basketball dream in the City of Angels. Little did they know, danger was lurking around the corner, ready to take away their goals faster than an ankle-breaking crossover. So there they were, LaMelo and LaVar, getting up shots at a gym in sunny Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Lonzo and Jello were on the main court, going head-to-head -head with some grown men in a scrimmage. Talk about taking on the big leagues, right? But things took an unexpected turn when one of the guys on the court got hit with a foul. No worries, he said, acting all tough. I'll be back. Spoiler alert, he wasn't talking about grabbing a quick snack from the vending machine. Next thing they knew, this guy returned, not with the basketball in hand, but with something far more sinister, a gun. You heard that right, a G-U-N in the gym. Who brings a weapon to a basketball court? Not cool, dude. Now, this is where it gets real. According to LaMelo, he suddenly heard a series of loud pops echoing through the gym. Pop, pop, pop. And just like that, chaos erupted. But in the midst of all the madness, we witnessed the superhero moves of LeVar Ball, the baller dad extraordinaire. Without hesitation, he swooped in, scooping up all three of his boys like a basketball trifecta and bolted out of the gym, proving that he's not just a baller on the court, but also a hero. Can you imagine the adrenaline pumping through their veins? I mean, these guys were dodging bullets like they were doing crossovers. It's a miracle they made it out on skate, ready to conquer the basketball world another day. Phew. I don't know about you, but I need a breather after that wild story. The Ball brothers narrowly escaped a tragedy that could have shattered their dreams. But hey, they persevered and are now making waves in the NBA. Wow, talk about a heart-pounding journey. These NBA players have genuinely embraced the thrill of life, from near-death encounters to facing armed attackers. Who needs action movies when reality serves up stories like these? Phew, these stories had us perched on the edge of our seats, my friends. Like the NBA, life is filled with unexpected twists and turns. So, the next time you step onto a plane or hit the court, be grateful for the thrills without the life-threatening situations these ballers face. Now, here's a question. If you could witness any heart-stopping moment in NBA history firsthand, what would it be? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below and let's keep the discussion going. And if you enjoyed this adrenaline-packed ride, make sure to slam that like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. We've got more spine-tingling stories and entertaining NBA content coming your way. Until next time, stay safe and keep loving the game.